Nerf is the company that made it okay to play ball in the house. But Nerf is more than just foam balls. Nerf is about blasters and darts and super soakers. Wait, super soakers? Yep. So let's see how it all ties together. The Nerf ball started it all. Inventor Ren Geyer had his first hit when he created the game Twister, which became a huge success for the Milton Bradley Toy Company in 1967. So with a proven hit on his hands, Geyer founded Windsor Concepts, a toy design company. But after the first eight months in operation, the company still didn't have any concepts to show to prospective retailers. One afternoon, while testing a new game called Caveman, which employed foam rocks, the game turned into chaos among the design team. Soon, the team of five grown men were hurling foam rocks at each other, laughing and having a great time in the process. At that moment, they knew they had something fantastic, but thought the rock shape should be more like a ball. As they brainstormed ideas for possible games, they wondered how they were going to market a ball that doesn't bounce. They soon realized that they had created a product that broke the traditional parental rule of no throwing balls in the house, a major selling point with parents of the day. They quickly figured out they weren't limited to just producing one type of foam ball and created different balls for different games, like dodgeball, basketball, and indoor baseball. Nerf goes mainstream. With an already established relationship through the success of Twister, Geyer contacted Milton Bradley and was shocked when they rejected the new products. Fortunately, Ren Geyer and his Windsor Concepts team were persistent and contacted Parker Brothers next. Management hesitated at first, but were persuaded by one of their new product managers to give it a try, as long as they changed the name. Windsor Concepts had originally named the product Falsy Balls because of their foam makeup. A Parker Brothers staff member nicknamed it the Nerf Ball because of the material's similarity to the foam padded roll bars used on Jeeps, which off-roaders had dubbed Nerf Bars, and the name stuck. So in 1969, Parker Brothers marketed the small ball in a little square box and sold it by the millions. Who knew the world wanted a ball that wouldn't bounce? The promotional copy on the original Nerf Ball box read, SAFE! The Nerf Ball is made of incredibly soft and spongy synthetic foam. Throw it around indoors. You can't damage lamps or break windows. You can't hurt babies or old people. Now that's a tagline. Taking into consideration the protection of babies and old people, was there ever a more noble cause? In 1970, the original Nerf Ball sold for a retail price of about $2, and after successfully selling over 4 million units in the first year alone, the Nerf Ball saw $8 million in sales. Today, you can buy a 4-pack for $24 or 6 bucks per ball at Walmart. Nice to know the ball you can throw indoors is still affordable. In 1972, the Nerf Hoop, a small ball and basketball hoop, and the Nerf football were released. The football was an instant success and quickly achieved the most sales of all Nerf balls. One eternal mystery, though, is why every Nerf football seemed to eventually end up with a chunk taken out of it. Are kids biting the balls as part of their touchdown celebrations? In any case, the family dog probably got the blame anyway. Additional products continued to be added to the Nerf line even after Nerf was purchased first by Tonka, then finally by Hasbro in 1991, which is home to Nerf to this day. Nerf Blasters After almost 20 years in the foam ball game, Nerf released its first blaster in 1989. The Blasta Ball was sold as a two-blaster pack with ballistic balls for two players to encourage gameplay. This was a type of pump-action blaster where the operator retracts and pushes a slide or grip forward to fire the blaster. This opened the door for a whole new line of Nerf toys, and kids and adults alike were more than ready to hop on the Nerf Blaster train. 
In 1990, arrows were introduced with the release of the Nerf bow and arrow, which was very successful. This was soon followed up with several other variations, but it was the Sharpshooter Blaster, released in 1992, that introduced the all-new Sharpshooter Dart, the very first Dart-type Nerf ammunition. Dart ammunition became so popular, it quickly outsold the ballistic balls. Now, when it comes to pop Popular blasters to shoot these darts look no further than the N-Strike series. The N-Strike series consists of blasters and products categorized by different blaster types, including air-powered blasters, revolver-style blasters, clip-fed blasters, and more. These blasters supported the use of additional accessories like the tactical rail platform, flip-up sights, scopes, shields, grips, etc. N-Strike series blasters were popular due to the adoption of uniform clip styles. Its clip system allows for multiple clips and drums of any size to be loaded into any compatible blaster. Innovations in the N-Strike series led to the development of the Long Shot CS6 in 2006. It was sold with a front blaster, a targeting scope, a six dart clip, and six streamlined darts. The enormous popularity of this blaster prompted Hasbro to re-release it five times. Now, a lot of testing goes into the release of a new blaster model, and you might be interested to know that Nerf actually has a testing warehouse where they try out new products. Full-on replica household rooms have been set up so employees can test out new products in the environment where they will be used. Now, who wouldn't want the job of official Nerf tester? Nerf Fanatics like any big-time fan, nerfers are very dedicated to nerfing. They even have very specific terms for their equipment. They use the term blaster, it's not a gun, and darts, not bullets. At one time, nerf wars were held in neighborhood streets, backyards, and living rooms. With the advent of the internet, nerf lovers were able to take their favorite pastime online. This only increased the pool of nerfers ready to show off their skills in battle, and nerf wars across the United States were soon being organized and promoted through forums like PDK Films, Nerf Haven, and Nerf HQ, among others. The members of these forums became collectively known as the Nerf Internet Community, or NIC. By this time, nerf battles were no longer just about ambushing your little brother in the basement. In the 2010s, the Nick held large annual wars on both the East Coast and West Coast of the United States, and certain locations even have biannual or monthly nerf wars. And nerf fandom is not only relegated to the US, nerfing is a global phenomenon. All around Australia, there were also yearly events called the Reign of Foam. Rules of participation were set by the hosts to create a safer and more balanced game. Today, the Nick has come up with a widely accepted set of standard rules, regulations, and game types like Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, Attack and Defend, Hide and Seek, and Humans vs. Zombies, among several other Nerf games. To say that Nerf is growing in popularity might be an understatement. The company recently set up a Nerf playground in Dallas, Texas, offering 90,000 square feet of playing area. So if you're looking to take your Nerf game to the next level, all it takes is a couple clicks and you could find yourself taking part in the ultimate Nerf war. Mods and collectible blasters. Now, any big-time Nerf fanatic will tell you that buying a Nerf blaster off the shelf is great and all, but there's so much more that can be done to a standard blaster. We're talking about upgrades and modifications. Mods have become a big part of the Nerf universe. Now, most of the time, these modifications are done with the intention of increasing the blaster's range or firing speed. However, some are done solely just to make the blaster look cooler. While Hasbro has an official stance against the modification of blasters due to safety reasons, unofficially, they probably enjoy some of the extra attention these mods bring to their product. We get it, some people like to soup up their cars, but in 
In the Nerf world, modders are all about souping up their blasters. Nerfers also adore their collectible blasters. Over the years, Nerf has released several iconic ones. For fans of the movie Alien, the Nerf Limited Aliens M41A Blaster is an example of such a collectible. Featuring an electronic dark counter and movie-accurate blasting sounds, this blaster stood out from all the rest. For Minecraft fans, there's the Minecraft Nerf Blaster series. Finally, there's the Star Wars Boba Fett EE3 Blaster, complete with custom armor and three removable drums. It also makes accurate blaster sounds and has a built-in electronic scope with an illuminated lens. Nerf Video Games and VR when you think of video games, Nerf is probably not the first thing that comes to mind. Pac-Man, Zelda, Call of Duty, Overwatch, okay, but Nerf? In 1999, the first-person shooter Nerf Arena Blast was released by game maker VMI. This was the first time the Nerf brand found itself the star of a multiplayer video game. Not to be outdone, EA Games, in association with Hasbro, released the popular Nerf and Strike in 2008 and its sequel, Nerf and Strike Elite, the following year. The big selling point of these games was the Switch Shot EX3. This feature doubles as a functional dart blaster and a Wii Remote accessory. Nerf has also produced video games accessories for the PlayStation 2, Nintendo DS, as well as the Wii. Competition increased in the gaming industry when Raw Thrills Gaming showcased their Nerf arcade game in 2019. And in 2021, Game Mill Entertainment published Nerf Legends, a first-person shooter game for multi-platform systems. If Nerf and video games seem like an odd couple, how about stepping things up and taking Nerf into the virtual world? Nerf Ultimate Championship, a virtual reality game, is coming to Oculus Quest sometime in 2022. The game that gets players out of their seats and into the action features quick matches full of vibrant colors, intense physical action, and a wide range of blasters that foster strategy and playability. Complete with a suite of avatar and blaster customization features, players can compete in head-to-head -head team matches, dodging darts and leaping around a futuristic arena filled with cheering fans. Nerf has definitely embraced the technology of the day, which has helped the brand stay relevant in the eyes of fans both old and new. The Super Soaker So what does the Super Soaker have to do with Nerf? Well, here's how it went down. In 1989, NASA aerospace engineer Lonnie Johnson invented the Power Drencher, which was later named the Super Soaker 50. This space-age technology revolutionized the world of the standard water pistol by using patented air pressure technology, resulting in the ability to shoot large quantities of water further and faster than any other product on the market. At the time, the Laramie Company helped Johnson test, develop, and bring it to market. Initial sales fell far short of company expectations, but thanks to an intensive TV advertising campaign, two million soakers were sold in 1991 alone. By Super Soaker's 10th anniversary, more than 200 million units had been sold. Finally, in 2002, toy maker Hasbro absorbed Laramie, and the Super Soaker would now be marketed under the Nerf product line. It was in 1996, before Nerf was involved, when Laramie introduced the Constant Pressure System CPS, line of super soakers. The company exceeded all fan expectations with its next model, the CPS 2000 Mark I, the most powerful water blaster ever made by a toy company. The gun's power came from its one-liter capacity compression chamber of highly pressurized water. Once the trigger was pulled, the full liter shot out in less than three seconds, with a stream so powerful the shooter could actually feel the recoil. But after several consumer complaints, the model was discontinued in favor of the less powerful Mark II design, which had a smaller compression chamber that couldn't hold as much water. 
This has resulted in the legendary CPS 2000 series becoming one of the most sought-after models by Super Soaker enthusiasts, with vintage Mark I and Mark II soakers regularly selling for $100 or more on eBay. Thanks so much for watching. Your support helps keep us going, so hit that subscribe button and check out another great video.